The themes I use in my work, uh, I may, uh, they directly relate to my life. I've been here since New York since 1987. Um, tiny cyclones of trash moving down 34th Street was what maybe fallen up the city. Uh, I moved to New York in 1989, no, sorry, 87 to go to grad school, and in 89 I go to the studio. I'm here every day working. It's kind of a dangerous building. We've had break-ins, fires, sometimes people have photo shoots where they light off flares, stuff like that. Fire department, all sorts of matter. Rats, leaks, it's kind of crazy. But you, whatever you have a studio in Williamsburg, you gotta be willing to lose it all at the same time. You never know what's gonna happen. You know, a lot of people ask me about the process that I use, and to me, it's not a relevant point. I just paint, you know what I mean? Um, that's how I was taught. I was just, you know, I'm just put, smearing colored grease on a canvas, basically. Then I use some sort of imagery and content, a palette, a bottle of liquor, a few damn souls, and some uh, spacing and deuces, things like that. And I build these, wait, they've been building these sort of almost like mnemonic devices where four or five elements build one single picture, but each one tells a story in and of itself. Someone asked me what kind of work I do, I say, I paint devils and witches drinking in the woods at night. So I started working with flash paint, which is a uh, cadmium-based uh, vinyl paint. Uh, and it is amazing. Uh, so I've been using that, and some golden acrylics. And I also use um, spray paints, which is kind of like chiaroscuro color for me. I really like that. And I use just a cheap, brush, whatever I can find at a hardware store. I don't, I have a few brushes that are really nice, but most of them are just what they call uh, chippies. You buy them for like painting, like, you know, sidewalk grates and stuff like that. That's sort of how I work. Like I'll paint on a canvas at first and oftentimes a part will look kind of dead. So I'll liven it up. I'll just glue a piece of paper right on top of it with like fresh color and then draw and paint on top of that. And I do it over and over again. I don't intentionally make them look layered but they just become layered over time, over reworking and reworking. Tell me about an example where you think you actually had to sacrifice to get to where you are right now with all these paintings here. Yeah. 
I think like a lot of artists, time. You know, uh, I don't think of it as a sacrifice because I mean, I don't. This is all. Uh, this is what I'm meant to do. You know, I, it's not something I, I even want to do, but just I just have to do it. I have to do it. Unintended consequences of different forms of shapes working together build exciting possibilities for the picture. So greatest fears in the next ten years. Greatest fears. Not having a studio in New York. Because I do feel like I have a finite amount of work I need to get done, and uh, I plan to run it out to the very end. When you come up with people and then they drop out, and you don't, you like, you're never gonna forgive yourself for that. If you're an artist and you stop, it's gonna haunt you forever. So you either completely stop and never go look back, or do it all the way. You sort of half do it when you can. It doesn't work. It'll kill you. Um, my advice would be. Everyone's gonna tell you you can't do it, but you should do it, and you can do it. If they tell you you can't find a studio, you can definitely find a studio. If they say you can't find a place to live, you'll never put it, you can find a way. There's a shoebox place you can come to. And I would just always keep painting at the center of your life, um, no matter what's going on, whether it's the girlfriend or the boyfriend or family or whatever it is, keep painting or your art at the very center of your life. And everything should radiate around it. Everything should service that, that time and that studio to work. Um, and once you get addicted to that lifestyle, uh, you're hooked. But um, my advice would be to show anywhere you can, meet a lot of other artists, but don't be afraid to spend most of your time in the studio. And you can do it. Especially the free and should be free from contaminants. It could be so nice, but your people aren't having it. I'm laughing at the evil while they're spreading it. And when this hits it, it's beheading it. Heaven tip, sweet wickedness, presence is ridiculous. That's why I'm kicking this full fist lyricist. Two school scholarship, musical apprenticeship. There's a life to live, but to what about it? Must quit. We just sit and trust it. Just because it can be seen doesn't mean we can discuss it. And if it's negative, intervene and disrupt it. See some, see peace. I'll reach out and touch it. 